Okay, word of warning before we start here. I do not hate this movie, but there's just something about it that just is rubbing me the wrong way right now. I don't really know what it is. I might be able to figure it out, but I'm not honestly sure. It's just, I'm probably going to rant. I don't hate this movie. I want that to be clear right from the get-go. Hello and welcome back to another Midnight Showing. As always, I'm Kelly, and I just got a Jason Bourne. Oh yeah. So Jason Bourne is the fifth installment, although it would like you to believe that it's only the fourth installment because the fourth one is completely retconned out of this. Never even mentioned it once in the movie. Now before we go into this, I just want to give you my thoughts on the other Bourne movies as just a whole. Now the Bourne identity defined basically the spy genre for the last 15 years, right? 15 years ago, right? Yeah, 2002. 15 years. Jesus Christ, I'm old. And since its release, not just spy films, but just action films in general have been trying to copy what it did. Hence the whole shaky handheld cam craze that we've been having for the last while. Yeah, people still can't do it right. I mean, even Paul Greengrass doesn't do it perfectly. There are times when I just wanted to grab his cameraman and say, HOLD IT STILL, damn it!" Anyway, the Bourne identity and the Bourne supremacy to me are the two greats of the f film franchise. The Bourne ultimatum is... watchable, but I don't really like it. The Bourne legacy I haven't actually watched completely through. I've seen... I had to assume most of it. I've seen most of the beginning and then the ending, I just catch it every now and then when I'm on in the break room, and that's just what's always the part that's on when I actually flip it over there. And even just from that, I can see why people don't like it. It really isn't a Bourne movie. It feels just more like just a generic action film with the Bourne title splattered across it. Which it is. And with all of that said, at long last, we come to Jason Bourne. Paul Greengrass and... Matt Damon return for the fifth installment. And of all of the Jason Bourne movies, this is the weakest next to the Bourne legacy. Yeah, this is like four out of the great ones, and they basically go in order with four and five replaced. It's not really saying much. Look, if you're going to this movie for just action, you're going to enjoy it. If you're going to this movie thinking that you're actually going to think in the movie, you're not going to like it. And in, on, on, uh, and in all honesty, it, it's rattling my brain as to why I just can't like it. And I think I've figured it out. It comes down to really two things, but I'll discuss those in the non-spoiler version. Needless to say... This isn't worth full price admission. Yeah, for those who don't want any spoilers, my final verdict before I go into any kind of rants about this is it's a discounted price. Maybe even a red box level, but I'm going to be generous and say discounted price. I wanted to like this movie. I really, really wanted to like this movie. But when you've taken this long of a break between installments 3 and what they would like you to believe is 4, the true 4, yeah, I wasn't hoping for much, but I really still wanted to like this movie. Final verdict, before going into spoilers, is discounted price. You're probably going to want to see it, but don't spend full price. Wait till you get a matinee or $5 Tuesday, or hell, wait for it to get to a discounted theater where you can see it for like 3 or 4 bucks. Just, just don't. Don't pay full price for this. So going into the story... This movie is about social media. No, no, it's not. That's a subplot that comes up in the second half of the movie. And that's one of the reasons why I've identified why I hate, I really don't like this movie. is because I hate that stupid fucking subplot. But regardless, we'll set that aside. The movie is actually about Born really not adapting to the fact that... His bad guys are gone. He's drinking, he's getting into pointless fights to let just tough guys beat the shit out of him. Mostly for money, 
kind of reminds me of that scene from Sherlock Holmes when uh, Robert Downey Jr. goes into that cool slow-mo, you know, spider sense fighting style. But without the actual spider sense fighting style, it's kind of like that. But in the meantime, Nikki Parsons, yes, that Nikki Parsons, has been trying to uncover more and more of these black op operations that keep just popping up because, you know, Treadstone may not have worked, but Blackbriar is right. Oh shit, Blackbriar's evil. You know, let's go on to the next thing. Uh, what is it called in this one? Iron Hand? Iron Hand. That sounds like a non evil project. So Nikki decides to do the oh so intelligent thing and hacks the CIA. <laughs> I can only see this going over so well. But what she finds is that, well, Bourne has more to do with Treadstone's development than he thought. Well, not Bourne, but his dad. Yeah, his dad was a CIA analyst who was killed by a terrorist attack. And by the fact that I used terrorist attack, you know it was them. And he's actually the one who came up with the Treadstone project in the first place. Yeah. They decided to test the project on his own son, which didn't sit well, and... Well... Dads make beautiful cannon fodder. And thus it turns into a revenge tale where Bourne has to go after the f two or three people that are actually left from the old organization and get his revenge. And honestly, that part of the movie is really goddamn interesting and cool. Then about halfway through it turns out the evil bad guys have another evil subplot that involves getting a social media app built that has a back door inside of it so the CIA can spy on us Americans. They mentioned Snowden by name, by the way. Not even going to hide where they got this idea from. Just, just check subtlety out the door. Good job. And every single goddamn time this movie brings that up or cuts to the Mark Zuckerberg replacement, who is ethnically diverse... Because every single time it does, the movie grinds to a halt and it turns me off so fast. I swear to God, I could not give two shits about this crap. Honestly, if I want to watch the evils of social media, I'll just turn on Summer Wars. Because at least that has something that I can identify with. Acid dripping cats. Oh yeah. And honestly, this just isn't a very original plot point, especially in this day and age. Oh, it still holds relevance. Then tell writers to actually learn how to write this shit, because it always feels like I'm watching the same exact goddamn movie. You know, the personal liberty versus the f security thing. Oh no, all of our information is online because we put it online and they can Google search it now. Oh no, they didn't need a back door for that, but they built one anyway. Ooh. Seriously. When they made fun of this concept in Person of Interest, like, three or four years ago. And it's still making movies about it. <laughs> it just, it boggles my mind. She's living off the grid. No photos online and nothing on the social networking sites. I never understood why people put all their information on those sites. It used to make our job a lot easier in the CIA. Of course, that's why I created them. You're telling me you invented online social networking, Finch? The machine needed more information. People's social graph, their associations. The government have been trying to figure it out for years. Turns out most people were happy to volunteer it. Business wound up being quite profitable, too. And this whole stupid social network and Iron Hand crap is just... It's boring. It doesn't feel like it belongs in a Bourne movie. Born movies were about international espionage and mass murders. Not, did I pick my nose on Facebook today? And honestly, that's the first thing about this movie that just, I, I hate. I really hate it because it takes it so goddamn seriously that this is actually going to happen and has happened and we're all too stupid to stop it. It really just gets annoying. I'm not saying that the movie needs to be sunshine and rainbows. I'm just saying that the movie needs to have some glimmer of hope. Which brings me to my second problem. Now, I, like everybody with an intelligent brain, doesn't like the secretive 
organizations that are secretive, like CIA or NSA or MI5 or any of the other acronymed things across the entire world who do all the same shit, basically. But I'm not one of those idiots that doesn't understand the necessity for such an organization. Yes, there is a necessity. And there's even good guys inside of those organizations. But according to the Bourne movies, which, yeah, basically took four to realize that, there are no good guys left in the world. You want to talk about Batman v Superman having a bleak tone here? Jesus Christ, can you name me one member of the CIA in any of the films that is not Nikki or uh, the Patterson person from Supremacy and Ultimatum and Legacy that fucking actually is trying to do something good and not just be a rich, greedy asshole? You can't. Because with the exception of those two, and Bourne, who lost his memory and went on a path to find it again, nobody is good in these movies. In fact, the way that it's shown, the CIA needs to be taken down immediately. And it gets so tiresome when... Everybody who apparently works for the CIA is the twirly mustache guy who's always so much smarter than you that you can't stop him. Yeah, I'll just have my assassin assets put some bullets in you. That'll shut you up. There's a thing called subtlety. CIA knows how to be subtle. Their depictions in these movies do not. And honestly, why doesn't Bourne just go and bomb Langley at this point? Anyone? Anyone? Because they're just blights on the world. They're not protecting anybody. Everybody just keeps getting killed because these organizations are let loose the dogs of war. Is there any reason why the CIA still exists inside of this, these Bourne movies? And honest to God, there isn't. I mean, one fucking nerve from Evangelion looks like a more above-water organization than the fucking CIA inside of these movies. I don't even know how... what kind of drugs you took, but seriously, you need, like, some antidepressants. Because there are good people in these organizations, and you need to actually depict that when you're five goddamn movies into this. And yes, five, as much as you don't want the Bourne Legacy to exist... You are five goddamn movies inside of this, and we've only seen two, two people in this entire fucking franchise who are actually good CIA operatives. I can't take this. I just can't. I can't. A few moments later. This is why I don't like this movie, okay? This main reason is why I don't like this movie, because of this one stupid, stupid element to it. But the movie is good, and it's not just the action scenes that are good. Matt Damon's performance inside of this is actually one of the better ones inside of the franchise. He's not just playing Jason Bourne like he was inside of the Bourne Ultimatum. In this one, he's playing a man who's been crushed by, well, learning the truth about himself. That he volunteered for this. And the shocking element to it, that his volunteer was forced out of him manipulated you know he's legitimately broken by this and he wants to be fixed again so fucking badly you have a powerhouse performance from your lead you have great action and you even have a cia operative who acts like i emphasize the word acts like they give a shit and that they are trying to fix the organization by helping Bourne to get his revenge and get rid of Dewey, played by Tommy Lee Jones, who is another powerhouse performance inside of this. He's basically the head frontrunner, who's now the director of the CIA. And he's the one who personally hired the asset, which is the assassin in this movie. They only call him the asset. He hired him to kill Jason Borden's dad in front of him so that he would have a reason to come join the CIA because they were terrorists, you know. It was a lie the entire time. And this revenge story is fine. You have a CIA operative trying to get rid of bad weeds in the organization. 
It kind of reminds you of Pamela Landy. That's her actual name. I may have said it wrong before. But, yeah, it's just... You have this good part. And then the movie keeps grinding to a halt because they kept talking about this stupid social network thing and how they're going to steal all the information from Americans, never mind the fact that this would also help get information on, you know, non-Americans, but, you know, fuck that. We have to make it seem like it's our problem and not the world's. And then, remember how I said that that woman acts? At the end of the movie, when all is said and done... This whole thing, her helping Bourne, her trying to bring him back into the CIA and give him a purpose again, all of it was just a fucking ploy to get Dewey's job as director of the CIA. That's fucking it. I, seriously, what the fuck? Now this probably means that this is all just one setup for another string of Bourne movies, but really... I don't give shit. I don't. Because you can't even depict one good person in the CIA. Not one. And there are people who are good in the CIA. <sighs> Seriously, I'm just going to go watch the fucking Burn Notice series again. Just so I have some depiction of a good spy. And really, that's, that's, that's my big problem with this movie. I know it's a personal one, but you are five goddamn movies inside of this series. And you can't depict one good person from the CIA. <sighs> I'm just going to go into another one of those rants again. I just I just need a second. A few moments later. Honestly, there is nothing else to say about this movie. It's pretty straightforward. It's a straight up revenge scene that does homage the other Bourne movies like the first fight scene that you actually see Bourne in. He basically takes down the two guys after them with that whole fire thing in the exact same way he took down the guards inside of born identity which i thought was cute you know there are good homages great action especially car chase at the end of the movie but just like i'll say that there's no fucking way that his car still exists by the end of that movie just saying and all in all you might not actually have as much of a hard time swallowing this movie as i did you know combined with my want to like it and these stupid fucking things about it, you know, I just can't enjoy it. I don't think I'll ever watch this movie again. Unlike, say, The Born Identity of Supremacy, which I put on every now and then. I skipped The Ultimatum because uh, I just didn't like it. It it was more, mostly me. I didn't like some of the retcon stuff, but it's not a bad movie. I, this one, this one I, it hinges on being a bad movie. It hinges, and that's why I just don't think I'll ever watch it again. You know, it's funny, because on my top ten best movies of last year, I put Mission Impossible 5 on there. You know, spies who actually do try to save the world and do good shit, and they don't have to lose their memory and go on a killing spree to do it. So, yeah. I really have nothing else to say about this movie. My final verdict is it's worth a discounted price. There's parts of it that you're going to love. And if you're going to think about it, there are parts of this that you're going to hate like me. So, yeah, that's my final verdict. And that's it for me. So, did you see Jason Bourne? Tell me what you thought about it in the comments below. And maybe we'll get some healthy discussion going. And as always, if you like what you see, be sure to hit the like button, the share button, and subscribe for more. Be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitch and Twitter. I do have some more videos coming out pretty soon, so uh, just want to let you guys know it's been kind of shit around here. That is both a literal and figurative pun. And yeah, I guess I'll see you all next time.